Well, my friends, now that the Pixel 10 is officially released and all the information is out there in the wild, it means, as usual, there are a ton of new AI features we 100% need to talk about. Google went all out this year, and if you're actually into AI, like I am, or even curious about what all these new devices can do, this video you definitely need to watch. Because I'm going to give you a super simple rundown on all of the biggest, most important AI additions that Google just brought to the table this year. Needless to say, there's a lot to go over, so let's get started. And of course, if you appreciate this kind of content, stick around, please, and consider subscribing to the 9to5Google YouTube channel because we have so much more Pixel 10 content in the works just for you. First up is probably the biggest AI announcement of the year for Google, if I had to say so myself, which is Magic Q. This is one of those features that does have the potential to fundamentally change how we use our phones if the implementation is done right. On the surface, Magic Q is an on-device AI that understands the entire context of what you're doing and proactively offers you the next logical step. For example, in the demos that we saw, someone texted a user and said, hey, can you call the restaurant and push back our reservation a bit? Instantly, Magic Q presented a little context pill right there in the messaging app to immediately call that specific restaurant, which required no searching for the number or no switching apps on the user's end. Just one button and they were calling the restaurant. As they were calling the restaurant, Magic Q automatically put the reservation details right inside the calling UI so they could immediately reference the date, time, and party size. Watching it in real time was pretty surreal as they didn't have to go to the phone app and they didn't have to go to the reservation email, then go back to the call. The AI just put it all together for you, quick, fast, and most importantly, on device, which does address a huge privacy concern. And overall, one of the coolest additions of this year's AI lineup. Building on that idea of a proactive assistant is the new daily hub feature and you can think of this as a virtual morning briefing custom tailored to your needs when you start your day the daily hub gives you a summary of the weather and your upcoming calendar events but it's a little bit smarter as it can also pull suggestions from magic Q, taking relevant information from google keep Gmail and messages, for example, and bringing them inside this daily hub UI. So in practice, it might highlight a restaurant reservation from your email or show you a Google Keep note with information you might need for a meeting later. While inside daily hub, you can tap on any of these items to jump directly back into the source app. It also integrates with other media apps so you can pick up where you left off on a podcast or get updates on your particular interests. From what I can see, it's designed to be a one-stop hub for everything you need to know in your life, and I'm intrigued to see how this fits into my day-to-day -day use. This next one is probably one of the most futuristic AI features I've seen in quite some time, which is live translate over phone calls. Obviously, we've had translation services for years now, but this feature is awesome because it can translate your voice from one language to another in real time during a live phone call. And the crazy part is it actually mimics the sound of your voice in the translated language. So the translated voice not only sounds like your own, but can also replicate inflections and tones like if you're happy or upset trying to make the conversation feel as fluid and natural as possible you also get a live transcript of the conversation with these really clean nice looking animations and like with most of the features we talk about today this entire conversation happens securely on device so it's not getting sent off to a server somewhere where anyone could theoretically listen to it, it's all on device. Now, for a personal favorite that I've been waiting for for quite some time now, Pixel Journal. This is Google's new app for quickly logging life events, and it seems like a great addition to the first party Pixel app portfolio. At its core, it's a super simple journaling app. You can submit an entry where you can add your thoughts, but you can also enrich that entry with photos, videos, data from Health Connect, and your location. The AI then offers recommendation on what to write about and gleans insights from your entries over time. You can also look at this from a calendar view, so you can easily reference your entries and keep Keep track of your emotions in the long term and honestly the app itself looks gorgeous with a beautiful material 3 expressive ui with nice rounded corners and really slick animations personally i already use gemini for journaling by just feeding my thoughts into one continuous chat thread but sometimes the chat runs into issues either by reaching a response limit or having a hard time keeping track of my life's problems so a dedicated on device, journaling app is something I see myself using a lot, assuming the implementation is right here. 
Next up, let's talk about Gemini Live because it did get a pretty big upgrade. Of course, you can still fire up Gemini Live with your camera to start a video conversation about your environment, but starting on the Pixel 10, this experience gets way more interactive. We now get visual overlays right in the viewfinder that can highlight and identify objects in the real world as you're sharing video. So in theory, you could point your camera at an area of your home and ask Gemini to point out a specific piece of furniture or maybe a specific object, pretty much just like we saw in the Project Astra controlling your phone demo showed off at Google I.O. this past year. And on top of that, there is a new native audio model that can detect the emotion in your voice, like if you're excited or concerned, for example, and it will adjust its responses accordingly. Lastly, of course, it would not be a Pixel launch without some AI features for the camera, and we have quite a few to go over this year. We're going to do a deep dive into this soon, so I'll just go really quickly over these, but one of the biggest is Camera Coach. This is powered by On Device Gemini, and its whole purpose is to read the scene you're trying to shoot and offer suggestions to help you find the best angle, lighting, and camera modes. When taking a photo with this activated, it might tell you to lower the camera angle or suggest a way to mitigate reflections, for example. On top of that, the in-app UI looks great, and while it seems to be geared more towards beginners, even as an experienced photographer, I can see this being helpful in giving me new ideas on how to mix things up. On top of that, we also have the introduction of auto best take, which as you can probably guess, will automatically initiate the best take feature to find the best faces for your subjects whenever you take burst photos. This seems like a no-brainer to have on by default, so it's a great progression of that feature. And lastly, we have a huge advancement with the addition of ProRes Zoom. On the Pixel 9 Pro, we had SuperRes Zoom, which used AI to enhance images up to 20 times zoom. Now, with the Pixel 10 Pro series, we have a massive improvement as ProRes Zoom works all the way up to 100x. We got some glimpses of this at our content capture event and it does work pretty seamlessly. You take the picture and the processing happens in 10 seconds or less. Clearly, there is some AI generation at play to make for a complete image, but to get a usable photo out of 100x zoom is an incredible use of artificial intelligence. And that, my friends, is a look at all the new AI features announced this year at the Made by Google event. Honestly, I probably missed a few that are more so updates to existing AI features a lot of Pixel apps got updated like Pixel Studio, Screenshots, and Pixel Recorder, for example. But as a whole, these are the big headlining features you need to know about. As you can tell, the big theme this year is not just about adding new features, but how many of these can work entirely on device thanks to the Tensor G5 chip. And that's really the most important part here. I know a huge criticism with AI is privacy and speed, and hey, rightly so. I think if Google wants this AI tech to be widely used and genuinely trusted, making it happen on device is the absolute way to go. And it seems like this year we're certainly heading in the right direction. So at this point, I'll leave it to you guys now. What do you think of all of these new AI features? Are there any of them in particular that you're actually excited about? And for the AI skeptics out there, I do want to ask, does the on-device nature of these features make you feel more comfortable trying them out? Please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts as I'm always super curious to hear what the Android community is thinking. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.